Hello and welcome to another Stranger Objects tutorial. My name is David Samuel Drayton and I welcome you to the show. This episode is purely dedicated to render engines available to Blender 3D. And as Cinema 4D users, again, we are very, very spoiled when it comes to freedom of choice. But with the help of the great Blender community, I was able to discover even more render engines and some of them are surprises and some of them are not. So without further ado, let's start rendering. Um, dive render, let's, all right, let's just dive in there. The first section of the video is focusing on Blender born renders. I mean, render engines that are based on cycles or other render engines that was born from within the Blender universe. So let's have a closer look. The default options in Blender are Eevee and Cycles. Both are unique and special in their own way. Eevee is the most amazing real-time viewport I came across. It offers a lot of beautiful features such as bloom, ambient occlusion, real-time reflections and refractions. It also supports volume rendering. And if your GPU is beefy enough, you will love to enable each and every checkbox there is. Cycles is Blender's physically based path tracer for production rendering. It is designed to provide physically based results out of the box with artistic controls and flexible shading nodes for production needs. Cycles offers if you enable the experimental features so more tools to enhance your renders, such as sub-polygon displacement within the sub-D modifier. I don't know why it's experimental, because it worked very well for me in the past, but maybe we'll never find out. Luke's Core Render is a physically based and unbiased render engine. The best thing about it, it's free, and it offers everything that Cycle has to offer plus more. My personal favorite in Luke's Core is its awesome caustics. Luxco Render is available for Windows, Linux and OS X. The Bounty Renderer is a free Monte Carlo ray tracing engine. It's a project born after the stagnation of the legendary Yafare project I'm pretty sure most of you have already heard of. It's available for free and you can download it from macOS, Linux and Windows PCs. Ecycles claims it's the fastest photorealistic renderer for Blender. And if you take a look on their comparison videos, I have no doubt that they are right. To really benefit from all the optimizations that went into Ecycles, I believe you will need a beefy Nvidia card. But the developer says system requirements are the same as the Blender defaults, so why not give it a shot? Ecycles is $149 and you can get it on the BlenderMarket.com. Appleseed is an open source, physically based global illumination rendering engine primarily designed for animation and visual effects. I haven't tested it, so if you have, please let me know in the comments. Appleseed is free and you can get it like all other previously mentioned engines from the links in the description. The shiny new toys. This section is focusing on commercial render engines we already know, used and are production tested and proven since years. Some of these engines are already available for Blender, while others are in alpha or beta stage. So let's check them out. Render Man has been Pixar Studio production renderer since 30 years now. You can be pretty sure it covers nearly anything you will ever need when it comes to high value productions. Render Man has won a gazillion technology awards and you can be sure that they will win another one in 2020. To use RenderMan for free, simply follow the link in the description and download the latest release. Let me see and know in the comments if you have used it yet. Redshift is a powerful GPU accelerated renderer. As you may have heard, Maxon Computer, the creators of Cinema 4D and Body Paint 3D acquired Redshift. But that doesn't stop Redshift to build an alpha version for Blender. The link in the description will lead to CG Record on which they show a 3.0 alpha version running in Blender. As far as I know, Redshift is the most used engine when it comes to motion design and several companies have focused on building high quality content like material libraries for it. As it is an alpha preview, I doubt we will see it anytime soon. V-Ray is a 3D rendering software that is compatible with most major digital content creation applications. 
The V-Ray for Blender plugin is free and available on GitHub. A VV Render Note license is all you need. Prices ranges from 65 bucks on a monthly sub to 150 bucks on an annual plan. Unfortunately, there isn't much information about the Blender version, so I guess it's identical to the other versions on other DCCs. Arnold is an advanced Monte Carlo ray tracing renderer built for the demands of feature lengths, animations and visual effects. It's been used in several movies and has a ton of features to offer. Officially there is no Blender support, but I came across a developer who posted a preview of his Arnold bridge for Blender in 2018 on BlenderNation.com. Feel free to remind him to finish it, you'll find the link in the description. Octane Render, and what you'll hear now is mainly what the developer Otoy claims, so I had to quote it. Octane Render is the world's first and fastest unbiased spectrally correct GPU render engine, delivering quality and speed unrivaled by any other production renderer on the market. Full stop. Quote end. Yes, Octane is insanely fast. Yes, it has some awesome features and I really like what they have done with the Blender version. So you can get Octane for free right now. Simply follow the link in the description and start your engines. AMD Pro Render is AMD's powerful physically based render engine that lets you creative professionals use open industry standards to leverage GPU and CPU performance, yada yada yada, images in Blender. Um, it's free and you can use it right off the top. I like it because I use Pro Render in my Cinema 4D setup as well. It's fairly fast and if you have the right graphics card, it will fly. If you download it from AMD, make sure to also download the free material pack that they offer on their website so you can learn how it works in Blender in absolutely no time. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I had producing and researching it. A big thank you to the Blender and Cinema 4D community for your support and your help on this episode, especially for all the tweets on Twitter pointing me in the right direction to find, uh, to find all of these render engines out there. If there is something you want to see in future videos, please let me know in the comments. I'm reading all of them. And one information for you guys out there, I've reached 300 subscribers. And I'm super happy about each and one of you. So please let me know what you want to see next time. And until then, I want you to stay safe and healthy and stay peaceful.